Welcome back to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast, you search Locked On Sports Atlanta. I'm Mark Zeno. Follow me on Twitter at Mark Zeno, M A R K Z I N N O. Of course, follow the entire platform at Locked On ATL. Make sure you're following our next guest for everything related to the Atlanta Braves and check them out almost nightly after every single Braves game on our Braves postcast right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. He is Grant McCauley. And you can also catch him on 92.9 The Game and from the Diamond Podcast and so many more things. Grant, always great to talk to you, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate it. My goal this year has been to, if you're thinking about the Atlanta Braves and somebody's talking about the Atlanta Braves, I want you to look around, and there I am. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, I was looking around for a win streak, and, well, yeah. there it is. Finally, it, it has showed up. Uh, a five-game win streak put together. Of course, the Braves have the off day yesterday. They'll start a series with the Oakland Athletics tonight at uh, at Truist Park. And I, I, I was sort of gloating yesterday because, remember, if we talked a couple of weeks back where I said June 15th was the date on the wall where I would officially hit the panic button if they weren't over 500 by then. And I specifically pointed to this stretch against the Rockies, the A's, the Pirates, and the Nats as a chance for them to get right. Now, well, I'd love to, you know, break my arm patting myself on the back here. It's it's obviously the Braves who have uh decided to start right. playing, yeah, <laughs> decided to start playing a little bit better baseball. I mean, from where you sit, what have you seen has been the key difference right now that's at least got them looking a little bit more like a team that could win the World Series? Well, it all has to start with winning games consistently, and I just don't feel like they were firing on all cylinders, which seems like a pretty obvious statement if you watched them, or they would get a couple of things going, and then there was one other aspect that they just couldn't get going. Like the lineup for so long, you knew that the answers were in the starting nine that Brian Snicker was putting out there, but you had three, four, five guys who were all slumping or just simply not producing, and you weren't able to put runs on the board consistently, and that is something that I don't think anybody looked at this lineup at the start of the season, particularly once you got Ronald Acuna Jr. back, that you would point to the lineup and say, what gives? What's going on with you guys? Why can't you score runs? So as I watched them go out on this road trip and figure out ways to score runs, saw different guys get red hot. Austin Riley had a great homestand, followed it up with a great road trip as well. We're starting to see big hits out of Matt Olson, Ronald Acuna Jr. When he's in there, he's had a couple of little things that have sidelined him here and there. He looks like the Ronald Acuna Jr. we remember. Dansby Swanson's been pretty hot for about a month or more now. And you've got a lot of different guys that are starting to step up. And oh, we have William Contreras out of nowhere also making some big contributions. So the lineup as a whole is starting to click. So if I had to point to one thing that has the Braves winning baseball games more consistently, they are either scoring runs in bunches and putting the game away, or they are able to find the rally and score them when they need to. And that was something, the comeback aspect of this team that was just completely absent for the first seven weeks. Yeah, uh, and a little pat on the back for Dansby Swanson himself. Much maligned, uh, you know, whatever it is about Dansby. That he's one of those athletes where there's a contingent of the fan base that is never really going to truly appreciate him for uh, all of his talents. And uh, they fail to understand that just because he was the number one pick, if he is your shortstop for 10, 12 years and mm -hmm. plays at the level that he has played his entire career – just because he's not a Hall of Famer doesn't mean that this is a bad player or a bad deal or a bad draft pick or a bad trade or whatever. He's really consistent. Uh, and, you know, back of the baseball card, Grant, um, he's he he's getting there at this point. Yeah, he's getting there. And I think the real thing that gets folks worked up about Dansby is the hype that comes with being the number one overall pick. And no, the Braves didn't take him number one overall, but they traded for him like six months later. So it really feels like being North Georgia as well, this is a kid that grew up in the system and grew up a Brave and now is a Brave, and he does. He is a streaky player. He has some highs and lows at the plate. He'll get red hot for three or four weeks, and that'll be followed by three or four weeks where you wonder if he remembers where home plate is. And I know that he does, and I know that it's hard. It's a humbling game, and humility, as I like to say, is only a pitch away. And hitters and pitchers find that out through the course of a 162-game season. Stick around. You're going to get reminders. But I feel like Dansby has that work ethic that helps him get through those kind of lulls. And the thing that he's doing so well this year is, despite the ice cold start at the plate, he has played premier defense. He's one of the most valuable defenders in all of baseball, and that is something that the Braves need as well because they haven't even had the defense working at all times this season. But Dansby's been kind of a constant for them. I was asked this past week, hey, at this point, a third of the way through the season, who's the Braves MVP? I did not hesitate. I said Dansby Swanson, and I believe that the numbers, particularly now that he's swinging the bat so well, yeah. timely hits, runs scored, runs knocked in, runs saved, that is the Braves MVP at this point of the season.
I mean, he's got the highest batting average on the team. Look, Ronald Acuna's batting 313, but he doesn't qualify, if you will, for a number of at-bats. Dansby does, so he's got the highest batting average on the team, at least of the regulars. So make it that what you will. Uh, Alex Anthopoulos uh, was making the, the media rounds yesterday on a lot of local radio stations here, including yours. And again, you can hear Grant at 92.9 on Sundays, uh, his show from the diamond, right? Is that, is that the name? Of it? Okay. Same That's as your it. podcast. I just yes, want to check anyway. Um, and so he was making the rounds and part of me feels like that some of that was as much of a reminder of everybody to chill as it was a little mini sort of victory lap and, you know, just kind of saying, guys, you know, you, you made a lot of this. And look, here we are right now. We're not going to change the course that we're on. We're not going to be looking for deals. We're not going to be doing it. We, we trust the roster we put together. We trust the coaching staff. We trust these players. And they're eventually going to start to perform like we thought they would. I kind of felt like that was, you know, he was there to remind everybody that he put this team together and it's not as bad as it's played. I mean, it might be a gentle reminder, but Alex Anthopoulos, particularly coming off of last year's postseason, I mean, he's been to the top of the mountain now. He knows exactly how good it feels to win it all, and I think he knows what it takes to get there as well because along the way, the Braves did suffer, even under his his leadership and his regime, some disappointments in the postseason and some series that they didn't win that they probably should have won, including the NLCS in 2020. So I, he knows the extreme lows and also the extreme highs, and it's about in baseball – finding a way to keep things somewhere there in the middle so that you're able to navigate through what is going to be some treacherous terrain at some point in the season. Unfortunately for the Braves, they found it right out of the gate. This was just a time that they were going to have to work through. And I know that during this past road trip, particularly after that first loss in Arizona, I think the wagons got circled and everybody kind of looked at each other and said, all right, we got to play better than this. We are better than this. Why are we not playing better than this? And really kind of taking a bit of an inventory on what's not going right for this club. And the result after that is five consecutive wins. And this is not because the manager went in and flipped the table with the spread afterwards and nobody got to eat and everybody's upset. You can't go in and start screaming and yelling at millionaire baseball players or athletes in general. That's not what they really respond to. It's about being able to create a dynamic of you know everybody is connected to the guy next to them and this team kind of starts to play as one and comes together and over the course of a season it's also going to find its personality as well so i feel like alex anthopoulos recognizes all of that has seen all of that has experienced all of that and we all knew he wasn't going to be out there trying to make seven trades in, in, in on cinco de mayo to try to figure out why the braves have had a bad month we knew it was going to be later no clubs are thrown in the white towel at that point no impact players are typically available and so this was the group, and this is the group still right. that the Braves are going to ride with. We may see what happens at the trade deadline, but hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, you don't have to go out there and make as many deals as you made last year to try to make something of this season. And the Braves are in a great stretch mark right now. They're in the midst of 29 consecutive games against clubs with under 500 records. You pointed at the A's, you pointed at the Pirates. They are next up on the chopping block for the Braves, and they need to take advantage of where they are right now in their schedule. Yeah, uh, and over the next nine games, two against uh, Oakland, four against Pittsburgh, three against Net. Look, just go six and three, right? Just just play sixty six percent baseball, and then you have a, after after you get through the Cubs. And oh, I just want to back up real quick. I was chuckling while you were talking about the whole clubhouse and everything else because I was just you know they, I guess maybe they don't need an a hole, right? Like that was the contention. Maybe you know, and, and no disrespect to Jeff Francoeur, who of course is the Braves TV broadcaster. I understood what he was saying, right? Like I get it. But it's – no. I think you need that guy when you haven't won a World Series, yes. when you haven't been. There's too many guys on this current roster who were just in playing in the World Series in October for them not to understand what it takes to get there. They didn't need an A-hole. They just needed to, to get their heads clear and just understand that, that, that they weren't living up to what the expectations mm -hmm. were. You want to call it World Series hangover? Knock yourself out. You want to call it just a bad start? That's fine, too. You want to call it a bunch of guys – underachieving early on. It happens year in and year out to players. I mean, there there are guys who are consistent all famous who've had bad Aprils and slow starts into May. I mean, you know, and at the end of the year, they're still batting 290 with 35 home runs and 100. Like it, it, anyway, uh, we digress. But I, I do, I do want to get, to, to, you know, you don't need an A-hole. I'm, I'm, I'm one, so I know when I'm needed and when I'm not. Um, yeah. But <laughs> I talked about the schedule because after they get through this soft stretch here, they are going to hit a hard stretch. Giants, mm -hmm. Dodgers, uh, and I think after that, I forget who it is. I want to say it's – I don't know, but then I know they got the Mets. Uh, oh, it's the Phillies. That's who it is. It's the Phillies, yeah. 
uh, which who knows what's it. Oh, by the way, Joe Girardi, what the hell happened there? Um, but, you know, look, that's a talented ball club. So you, you're you going to get a 10-game span against those teams that are all above 500 or at least close to it uh, in the Phillies' case. And, you know, there, those are the stretches where you just want to go 500, right? Like uh, you got 12 games against those teams, just do six and six. Don't do worse than that. If, well, you, if you get to seven and five, great. You'd like to make a little more hay than that, though. I mean, and the Giants are a club that hasn't been living the charm life that they were a year ago. They've had yeah. to deal with a lot of injuries. They're a club that I think has can play better than they have, and they have actually done a pretty admirable job of working through some of the injuries that they have had. But you are going to have that four-game series with the Giants. You are going to have a three-game series with the Dodgers. And we'll see what the Phillies are by the time the Braves meet them at the end of yeah. the month because, as you mentioned, the dynamic of their club just changed, and they did fire Joe Girardi. Is that going to fix all of their problems? No, but is the manager possibly one of those who had kind of lost that clubhouse and it just wasn't going anywhere? There are some teams where that is true and changes are made, and that is just one small part of it. But the Phillies, I know, are a club that hasn't done the best job drafting and developing players in order to build a contender. They have signed some free agents. They have made some trades. They have some stars on their roster, but I don't feel like they have the most well-rounded roster, and particularly annually they have this problem with their bullpen not being able to perform to the degree they need to to close out games. So we'll see what it is once they get there. But for the Braves, I think you just take it series by series right now. The Giants will be a test. The Dodgers are always a test, but you can't overlook any series because, yeah, the Oakland Athletics are in the cellar out in the American League West. You only have two quick games against them. Handle your business, both of those. And if you need a reminder about how crazy a 162-game baseball season is, the Pittsburgh Pirates just swept the Los Angeles Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. They're 5-1 and one against L.A. this year. Don't overlook that series and start looking at, oh, when are we playing the Dodgers? Because I can promise you nobody in the Braves clubhouse is going to be thinking that way, particularly if they didn't already get the reminder that, hey, if if you kind of look the other way or, or look past this club, they might find a way to beat you. And that you cannot afford if you're the Braves trying to chase down the Mets with an eight, eight and a half game lead in the NLE standings. Yeah, uh, I, I was on the wrong end of a, of a money line bet on the Dodgers Whoops. in the final game of that series going, there's no way they're getting swept by the Pirates. It's just not happening. There's no way. There's no way. Yeah, sure. I'll lay that heavy number. Knock yourself out. Uh, did not go well. Thank you for reminding me. But uh, I will say this much. One more question here. And this Anthopoulos, Alex Anthopoulos brought this up in a lot of his media interviews. Spencer Strider. Uh, and, of course, uh, if I look down at the uh, shirt you're wearing there, it uh, it, it beckons. It's it beckons. There. It's there. So. He's now officially going to become a starter. This is where he always was. Uh, I know a lot of people think his stuff and the makeup of him, you know, leans more towards a bullpen guy. And I heard Alex Anthopoulos talk about, look, when they thought they had the fifth spotter start nailed down with some security, it was easy to shove him in the bullpen. It was easy to put him there because they thought they had five reliable starters. Oh, yikes, they don't. Um, And so uh, at this point in time, it makes sense to put him in the rotation, but you know, you begin to wonder uh, where this, you know, what this does to a young man. Um, and again, I'm not saying he can't handle it, but I guess just kind of in your mind, uh, how much of this is one of those things where you think Spencer Strider wants to be a starter more than a reliever, or is he better off at this point in time staying in that reliever role? Well, there's kind of a two-part question. There's actually a lot of different layers to this, which is what makes it fun to talk about in baseball. But I feel like for a guy that started all his life, of course he still wants to start games. The question really was, is he stretched out and able to start games for you? And coming out of spring training, I don't feel like he was there. But as he got kind of his legs under him, if you will, and got a little bit of an orientation to the big leagues and had success, and then he started throwing two-inning, three-inning, four-inning stints, it became a little more apparent that, hey, this guy does have some gas in the tank, and it's going to be something that we might could ride a little bit further than asking him to just be one of a number of relievers that we have. But once you lost Luke Jackson, I feel like maybe there was a little bit of a hesitation to take Strider away from the bullpen mix, and then you went down Tyler Matzik as well. So maybe that, again, kind of doubled down on maybe we should keep him out here in the bullpen for a while. But time and time again, the guys that they tapped to start in the fifth spot of the rotation were not able to hold on to it. Bryce Elder. He showed some flashes, but walks were a problem. Tucker Davidson, walks were a problem. Waskari Noah, walks were a problem. Everybody that gets into this spot of the rotation seems to have a problem with walks. Spencer Strider walked five guys against the Colorado Rockies in his start on Sunday. I'm not saying that that's going to be the rule because he had had very good control prior to that. And his start in Arizona, that line is a complete liar when it comes to how well he pitched in that game. The defense really let him down. But 
I feel like he has the stuff to succeed in either role. Long term, I feel like maybe the bullpen might be the ultimate destination for him, but you might as well find out what you have and see if you can get a starter uh, for any length of time out of him and find out if this is a role that he can perform at the big league level because you're right, he's done it all his life. You might as well find out if he can before you just decide, well, he's better off in the bullpen. Well, you know, I mean, it's just the next John Smoltz. He, he did it both, and it worked out just fine for him. So clearly going to be the same for Spencer Strutter. Grant McCauley, again, check him out on our Braves postcast. Hear him on 92.9 The Game from the Diamond Podcast. Anything Atlanta Braves, you know where to go. Grant McCauley. Grant, thanks for the time as always, brother. I appreciate it. Stay well, and we'll do it again soon. You got it. All right, uh, we'll take a quick time out. Come back, wrap things up here on A to Z, Unlocked on Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast, make sure you search Locked on Sports Atlanta. We'll be right back.